Hi. So, I have some bad news. Um, we've had two losses on the farm this past week, and um, it's one of the reasons I haven't been posting in a while because of what we've been going through. So, um, we lost our little goat, Caesar, yesterday. Um, feels like a million years ago already. And then a week ago, we lost our dog, Camel. Um, this video is going to be more about what happened to Camel because I've been really wanting to kind of put a timeline through to explain things and maybe give information out there for anyone who's going through a similar situation with their dog. Um, so maybe in the next video, I'll talk about what happened to Little Caesar. But this video, we're going to focus on Camel. So most of you know that about two months ago, I had come home. And um, up until this point, Camel had been acting perfectly fine. And I had come home from being at the zoo with the kids and um, noticed that he was having difficulty breathing and he was actually um, having difficulty walking. It was like um, he was getting vertigo. And after a while, I realized that he actually had a very swollen neck as well. And I figured that was attributing to the breathing issue. And I got really afraid for him and decided to take him to the emergency room. Um, at the emergency room, they did some tests and right away they determined that it was lymphoma and it was actually a very severe case of lymphoma. Saying that right? Yeah. And um, they said that there were chemos that you could do, but um, not many people chose that route and um, to let us know if that's what we wanted to do. But they said that it was so severe that they advised putting him down that night. Um, my husband was at work and I was not willing to do that without him. So um, I decided to bring him home with me and they were very much persistent on wanting him to be put down and then um, were very much unsure that he would even make it till the morning. So we were expecting to say goodbye to him that night. Um, they gave him a couple, they gave him steroids and some painkillers and sent him home. Um, we took him to our normal vet the next day and the normal vet pretty much told us the same thing, but he told us that there was no need to put him down, that um, you know, he wasn't in any pain and we might have another month or two out of him just depending on how fast the cancer takes him. So, um, that was a little bit reassuring, but again, um, we were told the same as we were told at the emergency room that there are chemo treatments, but they're extremely expensive and they're not really worth it. And we did a lot of research in the, in the next couple weeks and we realized that there are actually are some chances where chemo will um, get you a whole nother year or two out of the dog. So um, we kept going to the our normal vet and the clinic asking them for help on finding a doctor who does chemo and um, they knew of nobody who wasn't at least an hour to two hours away. No, it was more than an hour. Yeah, it was like two to three hours away um, in the big cities. They didn't know of anyone nearby who would do it. And unfortunately, it seemed like because his case was so advanced that most of these doctors wouldn't even look at him. If you can see now a little better. Hi, well. His left side's so much bigger. Bigger. My poor bubby. My poor bubby. Yeah. You want to go outside? No. Um, and then somehow, somewhere, somebody hinted that a place in very nearby within an hour's distance might do chemo. And we looked into it, and sure enough, this place that wasn't very far from us at all um, did do chemo. And we went there, and um, we sat down and talked to the doctor, and she was very straightforward and realistic about it and said, look, you know, um, there are some times where we can do this treatment, and if we do it right and it works, then he could be cancer-free for the rest of his life or he could be cancer free for a couple months and it could come back. Um, but there is a high percentage rate of dogs who go through chemo who actually make it out of chemo and get into regression. 
And we were just really surprised by this because this is not what we had heard up to this point. The one problem that we ran into right away was that the emergency clinic had prescribed us steroids. So we had been on steroids, or my dog had been on steroids for two weeks already. And the doctor was a little worried that this was going to affect his chemo because apparently if you're going to do chemo, you don't want to be on steroids before the chemo. Now, medically, why? I can't tell you that. I'm not good with medical stuff. And, you know, she explained it to us in detail. And I, I couldn't tell you what that has to do with it. But for the most part, it she basically said it was a bad thing that he had been on steroids before we got there. So anyway, we started his chemo treatment. Um, it was, we were quoted three to $5,000. Um, we know that that's expensive, but this dog has been in our family for eight years now. He is the best dog we've ever had. He's so, um, he taught himself, he potty trained himself. He's taught himself the boundaries of our yard. He doesn't go off on adventures. I mean, he's just a really great dog and um, he's, been in all of our kids lives since they since they were young my daughter has only known him i mean she's four years old he's been there her whole life and um so we decided to go through the chemo and we made it right away um there was just definite signs of um what's the word um progress and um he started, the swelling went down, he started being more active, he was eating and drinking better, and um, not exactly back to his old, his old self, he wouldn't run off and bark at things like he used to, and he wasn't really running as much as just, you know, jogging or lightly walking places, but hey, he could actually walk, I didn't have to help him up and down the stairs, um, really, so it really, really helped. Camo, one week almost well no not a week about half a week after his first chemo treatment come here buddy can you stand up look how good he looks yes good boy looks so good he's wagging his tail he's up and moving everything's going great right buddy yeah oh he's still a little tired that's okay that's okay um we did that for, I think we were on our fourth week, or no, let's say three weeks. We did three weeks, and everything was going fine. And then a couple weeks after his last treatment, um, well, the third week treatment, not his last treatment, the third week treatment, um, he just suddenly ballooned up again um, really bad. And he was having difficulty breathing, and he couldn't walk. So I brought him back in to the emergency room, and they were very concerned about him. And the doctor was very honest and she said, look, I don't think we're going to be able to save him, but let's go ahead and try his last bout of chemo that he was just about to go through the fourth week one. And that was the injection one. And um, let's just go ahead and do it and see how it works and see if he has a good reaction to it. And if so, maybe this will pull him out of this and we can keep going with chemo, she said. But if not, we won't be able to continue with chemo. It don't need to be put down. Um, so we, we did that and at first it seemed like he had a good reaction. The swelling went down, he was eating, he was wagging his tail and the next day, cause they wanted to keep him for two days and the next day they called me and told me it wasn't good that he, he was no longer reacting well to the chemo and that they wanted to put him down. Well, once again, um, my husband was at work during this time. He works a lot. And um, I did not want to do it without him. So I asked him if it was okay if I took him home for a couple hours. And then once my husband got off work, we would bring him back to the clinic to be put down. And they said that was okay. Um, I came and picked him up. And it was terrifying because he didn't look like himself anymore at all. And I'm going to have videos throughout this, hopefully. Um to show you what he looked like. He did not look like himself at all. He looked like almost a cartoon character because there was no bones in his face anymore. His face was so swollen. His arms, his shoulders, everything was just swollen. He looked like he had gained 50 pounds overnight. Um, I brought him home and all he wanted to do was lay down 
Um, he didn't really want to eat or nothing. So my husband gets off work and I tell him what happened and he's not willing to say goodbye. And I knew it was going to be hard for him. He's not one to not give up a fight. And so we call the clinic and we tell them that um, we're going to try and push it off for another day. And while they're understanding with us, and I'm not trying to bash this clinic, while they're understanding with us, they basically said that they didn't think he would make it another day and that they really encouraged us to come in and do it that night. And warning bells started going off in my head at that time because I was like, I don't understand. If he passes away at home, why is it a problem opposed to passing away there? But I didn't ask. Um, I'm very much a do what I'm told kind of person. So I just was like, okay, I'm sorry. We will, we will try and do it tomorrow because I felt that I was being a bad person for not bringing him in. Um, the next day we do the same thing. Um, he starts to do a little better. Not a lot. He does a little bit better. He's eating and he's walking and he's able to go in and out to go bathroom. And, um, my husband's not willing to say goodbye. And he said, no, we're not doing this. And so we called the clinic and told them that. And um, we got a lot different response this time. It was, um, again, I don't want to bash them, but it was borderline rude where we were told that the doctor was disappointed in us. And um, it almost felt like they were threatening legal action because I guess they thought we were going to do something inhumane to him to put him down. All we were trying to do was tell them that we wanted him to pass away at home. And if there wasn't going to be any bad responses from him, or even if there was, we would deal with it. But we knew that he was most comfortable at home. I mean, when he was in the emergency room those two days, I was a nervous wreck because he does not like to leave the house. He does not like to go places. You know how some dogs like to have car rides? He's not that dog. He likes to be home. And um, we just really wanted him to be able to pass away at home. And so their response really freaked us out because, you know, one, it, it definitely felt like they were trying to make us feel like bad people. And it definitely felt like they were trying to push us into going ahead and euthanizing him. And we didn't really understand why there was a difference between letting him pass at home and euthanizing him. Um, well, Saturday morning rolls around and this is the third day. And um, he's completely better. He... All the swelling is completely gone. He looks very skinny because he's lost a lot of weight throughout the chemo and everything. But he, um, all the weight swelling's gone. He's running around. He's even barking at things. Um, just like a different dog again. Did you get hot, buddy? Yeah, you went for a swim? You got clovers everywhere. Yeah. Hi. Hi, bud. You're such a good boy. Who's a good boy? Oh gosh. Oh my gosh. It's all over me. Awesome. And now, don't get me wrong, we weren't naive enough to think that he suddenly got healed, but, um, I mean, not that God can't do those things, he can, but we knew, you know, maybe not in this situation, not to get too hopeful. And, um, we got over a half a week like that. We got from Saturday to Tuesday where he was back to his normal self. He got to run around the yard. He got to have fun with the kids. Um, you know, just interact with the entire family like that. And then Thursday morning he woke up and he couldn't really get up. He couldn't raise his head. He couldn't eat. He wouldn't drink. And, um, he sat there and slowly died on me. Um, it took a couple hours, but I knew what was going on. And, um, I sat with him. Unfortunately, I wasn't there when he took his last breath. I had to run outside to meet somebody, and when I went back inside, he passed away. And it, it was devastating, but it's what we wanted. We wanted him to pass away at home, and it, there wasn't really any bad side effects to it. I mean, I had to clean up after, obviously, but, I mean, he got to pass away in the home that he's always known with the family that he loves, and... So now, now that everything's over, um, it is really weird to reflect on the two incidences where first at the emergency room and then at the, the chemo clinic where we were encouraged to put the dog down because he wasn't going to make it another day. And it's just really confusing to me why 
that is something that we're, we were getting suggested, suggested so much. And maybe it's because as dog owners, we tend to, um, I don't know, go the easier route because they're not humans and so it's easier for people not have to deal with the mess. But when someone is willing to deal with it, I don't understand why it, it's almost frowned upon and, and looked down upon to not euthanize your animal. Um, he wasn't in pain, I can tell you that. Maybe those last couple hours, I don't know, but for the most part, he had a great last couple days. He was having a blast, trust me. Here. Oh, Bobby. Who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? Stop it. Who's a good boy? Stop it. And I just don't, I just don't get that. And then the other thing that I don't understand is why when I told the emergency clinic that we would consider chemo, did they go ahead and put him on steroids? D do they not know that that's a bad thing for chemo? I mean, it's possible that they don't. But I think emergency clinics and, and veterinarians in general should all know that. They should know that if you're going to consider chemo not to be on steroids because our veterinarian didn't warn us either. And so um, it really worries me that maybe this information isn't out there and needs to be out there. All in all, um, we are so blessed to have those last two months. And again, I'm not trying to bash anyone because because of the emergency, cl emergency clinic, because of the chemo clinic, we got two more months with our dog. You know, um, we got what we wanted out of it. And I know that we'd be silly to think we would have got more without them. I just, you know, I worry about somebody else having to go through this mental trauma and, um, you know, I just want you to know that you're not alone if you've been through this and do not feel like a bad person if you want your animal to pass away at home. I don't, I really just don't understand why that's a problem. But anyway, so that's your story. Um, we're a week in, or a week later into it and it's, it's been a blow. We're all feeling it. I think me more than anybody because he was my best friend and he followed me everywhere and it's really hard being outside without him and walking around without him next to me, walking around in the kitchen without him tripping me, you know, but I know that he's in a better place and, you know, I know dogs don't live as long as humans and it was going to happen eventually. I definitely wasn't ready for it yet, but, you know, he's a great dog and he's in a better place. Thank you for watching. Um, please like and subscribe. And I will try and upload a video soon about what happened to our little Caesar. Thank you.